this video I'm going to work out an individual limit. Um, basically just an algebraic approach here. At some point in time I am going to use the factoring technique of the sum of two perfect cubes. All right, My students usually refer to this as SOAP because then that helps them remember their signs. If this is your original sum of the perfect cubes, it's a plus, then the SOAP acronym gives you your signs. So same sign, opposite sign, and then always positive on the last one. So my students refer to this as the SOAP factoring method. All right, so to start with on this limit, um, you're going to need to do that direct substitution just to make sure and verify that you really do have an indeterminate form. So if I plug in negative 2 there, I'll have a negative 1 half plus a 1 half on my numerator. If I plug in negative 2 here and cube it, I'll have a negative 8 plus an 8. All right, in both cases, that does give me that 0 over 0, which is that indeterminate form. All right, once you get that, then that means that you need to do something else to solve your limit. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the function here that I'm trying to take the limit of, and I'm going to see that it's a complex fraction. So the easiest thing to do would be to get rid of that complex fraction, and I choose to do that most of the time by multiplying through by the um, least common denominator. So I've got a denominator of x and 2 there. This denominator of the complex fraction is 1, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to multiply my top by a 2x and I'm going to multiply the bottom by a 2x. Doing that as a form of 1 does not change um, my limit there at all. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches negative 2. Alright, in my numerator now, the whole point of multiplying through by that least common denominator is to get rid of those fractions that are in the numerator. If I take 2x times the 1 over x, the x's are going to cross out and it's going to leave me with the 2. Notice the fraction is gone, which is what we want. A 1 half times the 2x, distributing there, the 2's will cross out, it's going to leave me with an x. So that numerator is going to go to a 2 plus x. Now on the bottom, I'm going to choose not to um, distribute or anything. I'm just going to leave that x to the third plus 8 times that 2x right there. All right, now continuing on with some algebra steps, the only thing I can do here is I can factor this according to this formula. I will probably automatically go ahead and rewrite that so I've got x plus um, 2 on the top. So we'll have the limit as x approaches negative 2. On top I'm going to have the x plus 2. All right, now let's go through and um, factor this. I think I'm going to take that 2x and put it in front just to get it out of the way. All right, so following this formula, cube root of x to the third is going to be an x. I'm going to keep the same sign. Cube root of 8 is going to give me a 2, so I'm going to keep that there. All right, now I'm going to follow this. Let's square our first term there, which would be an x squared. Opposite signs. And then a times b is going to give me a 2x, and then always positive, and square the last one is going to give me a 4. Okay. Taking the limit of all of that, I'm taking the limit of all of this. Keep those square brackets in there. Okay, now from here, hopefully you see that you can cross out those x plus 2s. That's going to leave you with a 1 in the numerator there. All right. And then from here, it looks like I'm going to probably be able to do just a direct substitution. I am going to rewrite that limit one more time just so we are clear at what we're looking at. We've got the limit as x approaches negative 2. Let's put those square brackets in. In my denominator, I'm going to have a 2x times that x squared minus the 2x plus the 4. And we've just got the 1 in the numerator. Okay, now I'm going to do my direct substitution, plug everything in here. All right have a 1 in the top. In the bottom, I'm going to have a 2 times a negative 2. Inside those brackets right there, I'll have a negative 2 squared minus 2 times another negative 2 plus a 4. All right, let's crank this out pretty quickly here. We'll have a negative 4 there. Squaring there, we'll have a 4. And then we're going to have 2 times 2 is going to be a 4 there and then plus another 4. Okay, and that should be, if I've done all this correctly, this should be a negative 1 over 48. Okay, let me check the arithmetic there and make sure it's right. Um, but this is pretty much a straightforward limit. 
definitely using some factoring techniques and definitely using the technique of multiplying through by that least common denominator to get rid of that complex fraction. Other than that, it's a straightforward limit. Um, so definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share with your friends so that they can benefit too. Thanks.